Everybody wants it, and we got it. It's a Nothing Phone review on US Mobile. I'm Anthony, welcome to the video, let's check it out. Nothing Technology Limited is a consumer tech company based out of London, founded by Carl Pei, the co-founder of OnePlus. Who could forget the golden era of OnePlus when the Chinese startup launched its first two phones, the OnePlus One and the OnePlus Two, with flagship specs and a low price tag that disrupted the smartphone industry. Co-founder and current CEO Pete Lau stated in 2014 that OnePlus would be the Muji of the smartphone industry, bringing simplicity, affordability, and quality together. As time went on though, particularly into the late 2010s, it felt like OnePlus had began to lose its way, having morphed from the flagship killer into the flagship itself. OG fans were disappointed, but success continued, with millions of units sold at every launch. Eventually, the OnePlus Nord lineup was announced, a return to affordable pricing. But now, it seemed that OnePlus had two starkly different product lines for very different users. The simple naming structure, exciting features for the price, and a user base full of that startup era passion seemed to be by the wayside. In 2020, Carl Pei announced his resignation from OnePlus on the company's online forums. In that statement, he said he would follow his heart on to what's next. Shortly thereafter, nothing was founded. The company's first product, the Nothing Ear One, were true wireless earbuds similar to the AirPods Pro but with a completely see-through design. This would be the design motif that will carry on into the Nothing phone. Today, the Nothing Phone has arrived with a similar see-through design to the Nothing Ear. Nothing Phone 1 is Pei's redemption shot, an opportunity to reinstate the accessibility, quality, and charm of the early OnePlus days. Does the Nothing Phone 1 accomplish this? Let's find out. Here's how the phone feels in the hand. For 399 British pounds, or roughly 460 US dollars, this is top-notch style. Obviously, it has a glass back with some internal components exposed. This includes the Qi wireless charging, the camera flash, recording indicator light, and, of course, the Glyph interface. But we'll get into that later. The overall design certainly takes cues from iPhone, but with more comfortable button placement. You get your power button on one side, volume rocker on the other, small camera bumps cut out for each individual camera, and the USB-C charging port on the bottom. At about seven ounces, the phone is light in your hand, so YouTube and gaming full screen looks and feels good. The edges are geometric, but not as sharp as the iPhone, which is a pleasant surprise. The back glass panel is nice and grippy to the hand, so it won't be slipping out when you hold it. The fingerprint reader beneath the screen is easy to reach and activates really snappy, and typing is great, no complaints. Bringing the phone home to use it for a few weeks, I had to bring everything over from my iPhone 11 Pro to the Nothing phone. I was pretty intimidated at first because I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to work, but it wound up being a pretty pleasant process. It took about 13 minutes for the phone to tell me how long the data transfer would take, and connecting the phones together via USB-C to lightning cable was really convenient. Once everything was hooked up, it took a little over an hour to complete. I will say that while the phones were connected, the Nothing phone was charging the iPhone. So as the Nothing phone kept discharging and discharging, I eventually had to place a Nothing phone on a wireless charger while it transferred data from the iPhone to it while also charging the iPhone. <laughs> so if you're doing this at home, make sure you either have a wireless charger handy or that your phone is at 100% battery and you're not transferring too much data to where a several hour transfer might just drain the Nothing Phone's battery. Once I got my apps installed, my contacts imported, and my US mobile SIM card running, it was time for customization, which runs deep with Android. The relearning of everyday functions made me realize how integrated iOS is into my body's muscle memory. Whoa. <laughs> software. In addition to the hardware design, the software is one of the selling points of the Nothing phone. It runs Nothing OS, which is a lightly skinned version of Android. There's zero bloat. I really love the slight animations that you get when you hit the end of a list. It just stretches everything out a tiny little bit and it feels really, really good. I find myself actually just on the home screen or on lists just dragging up a little bit just so I can see that animation go. The native Nothing font is featured on the lock screen, the exclusive widgets, and throughout a few apps like settings. The always on display will show you the time, date, weather, some notification icons, and your charge percentage. And it can also display a custom message when you wake the device, which I set up to greet myself. Swiping accesses the app drawer from the home screen. By default, the keyboard is turned off, but it's really easy to go into settings and turn that on for me to get that iOS experience where I go to search for an app and the keyboard pulls up automatically. You can type, find it, pull that app up. Moving on to the notification bar. 
swipe down to get notifications and controls, and then swipe once more for your full controls and settings options. At the top left, you get your internet connectivity options, which has a nice little animation with the dots as you go from your cellular, Wi-Fi, and hotspot toggles. And there are nice large buttons for your commands. These are customizable, so you can drag and drop your favorite ones and put them in the order that you need. I like having flashlight and Shazam available at a moment's notice when I'm out and about. Unfortunately, the flashlight does not have multiple levels of brightness, and there's also no flashlight option for the Glyph interface, which I was pretty surprised by. If you want a workaround for this, there are some apps that can override the software and force the LEDs to turn on. You can also go into the camera app, select video, and turn on the Glyph as the lighting mode. Jumping into settings, it looks very typical for Android. You have your nothing font at the top, which is awesome. And as you go through the menus, you can find everything from customizing your notifications for each app, setting up different Glyph lights for each app, and then of course all your standard stuff like software updates, Wi-Fi, cellular, etc. While we're here, let's talk about UI and customization. The nothing stock wallpapers were way too trippy for me. I went for a minimal, more soothing design with this live wallpaper. Icon pack integration is made super easy on Nothing OS. The Google search bar and the Google Now home screen are toggleable, and navigation is customizable as well if you want to go with the classic Android three button style or you want to go with swipe controls. Mentioning the three button navigation, it's not customizable at this time. So if you wanted your app switcher and back button swapped, you can't do that currently. But that should be easy to fix with a software update. Now getting into sound design, which I feel is integral to Nothing OS and the overall experience of using a Nothing phone. The sounds are definitely on brand. In fact, they're quite industrial and robotic. Uh, for me, I'm more of a skeuomorphic, organic kind of guy. And these sounds are incredibly glitchy, tech-focused, very futuristic. If you're not into the futuristic aesthetics, Nothing OS makes it really easy to customize your notification sounds and change them up. But there were some sounds that I liked, and so I set up a few custom notification sounds for some of my favorite apps. The notification sounds also coincide with the Glyph interface's lights. So as a call comes in, the sound will match the lights that pop up on screen. The same thing goes for your regular notification sounds. One thing I will say, please change the default alarm sound. It is very alarming, which may be the purpose of using it, but for me, I like to wake up nice and easy and not to the sound of alarms firing off in my brain. Typing also emits a slight sound from the haptic engine, which I found to be quite pleasant. It didn't bother me at all. I know some people might be annoyed from that sound or even that feeling in the hand, but of course you can turn that off if you need to. we covered software, let's get into the hardware. The first thing you see when you have the phone in your hand is the screen, and that 120Hz OLED screen is incredible. Animations, games, everything is just so smooth. And Apple Music actually runs better on here than on my iPhone 11 Pro. <laughs> I've had zero issues seeing it in the daylight at its normal 500 nits. The screen can reach up to 1200 nits, though software restrictions prevent it from going over 700 at this time. Typing on this screen is a natural transition from iOS. Most typos are easily corrected with the predictive spelling. The haptics do feel amazing with this keyboard. It's quite a pleasure to use. If you're going to be swiping around as well, swipe typing works great on the Gboard. It would be pretty cool to see a nothing branded keyboard, but maybe the dot font would get a little bit overwhelming if you're staring at that all day. Now we have to talk about it. The Glyph interface. For something so stunning and heavily marketed, it is surprisingly minimal in its application. It'll glow when plugged in to show your charge level. It lights up for calls and notifications, and you can assign these to custom apps and contacts. Flip to Glyph can be toggled to make notifications silent when the phone is face down. You'll only see the Glyph lights. I opted not to use this option because typically I have notification sound on. I like it that way, and if I wanted it off, I can just do that manually. If my phone is face down, I want to get the sound in addition to the flash. There is a secret music visualization tweak, which is really, really cool. You'll add a custom contact called Abra, and this will unlock the music visualizer in your settings. Once this is enabled, you'll get an old school style music visualizer, like from the Windows days where the lights will pop up depending on the sounds coming out. I don't know how accurate this is to like the EQ or the rhythm, but it's just fun to see the phone dance around and it's really good for a tech demo and especially great for the purpose of making the phone look aesthetic and really cool while you're shooting it. I have come up with a little wish list after using this phone for a few weeks of ways I think the Glyph interface could be stepped up to the next level. 
I'd love to see a pattern creator where users can make their own patterns for the glyph lights and maybe even make them uploadable where users can share ones that they've made and they can then assign those to their favorite contacts. Even more sounds would be awesome. As I said before, you know, a lot of the sounds are very glitchy. There are a few that are a little bit more haptic sounding or a little bit more organic sounding and I would love for nothing to dive deeper into that sect of sound design as well. Multicolor support would be awesome. Right now we just get a little green tip at the top of the charging indicator, but having multicolor would be great for shooting photos and videos and also, of course, aesthetics. And I'd also just love a softer glow light, reminiscent of those older Android phones where you would have an LED notification light that softly turns on and off depending on what notifications you have. Like for example, Snapchat would glow yellow, messages would go green, and so on. So the Glyph interface's function is very cool. It's very, very unique, and, and I love it. I mean, it, it's such an awesome feature to have on a phone you carry around with you every day, and it just has those nice little personal touches when you set up the glyph lights to match your favorite apps and contacts. I think in the Nothing Phone 2, or possibly even through software updates, the functionality can grow a lot, and involving the users more in the process would make it just levels above where it's at right now. But this is a good start, and I'm looking forward to what Nothing will do next with the glyph interface concept. Continuing down the body of the phone, we get into the microphones and the speakers. So I'm going to talk about calling. HD voice calling sounds incredible in the U.S. on U.S. mobile. Don't try this at home, but yes, the phone does work in America if you can get it. It feels natural in the hand and natural on my face. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's easy to hold, and the speaker has a lot of clarity. The frequency range of the speaker itself is actually really perfect for taking phone calls. Like it comes out of the speaker with a lot of oomph, a lot of gusto, and, and the sound definitely carries. They are certainly loud. Some of the loudest I've heard in a smartphone. The sound of them is very heavy on the mid-range. You're not gonna get a ton of bass, but you'll get enough where you can hear it, and you're really not gonna get ultra crisp highs. The speakers get the job done. It's one of the parts of the pricing point where they're not going for the flagship spec. They're going for something usable, and in this world where everybody's rocking true wireless headphones, people are putting headphones on more and more, it, it, having great speakers isn't always a necessity. But if speaker quality is the most important thing to you, you may want to consider other mid-tier options, but I don't know any other Android phones at this price point that are going to get much better on the speaker side of things. On the back, we have dual 50 megapixel cameras, and on the front, we have a 16 megapixel selfie camera. The camera has a nice shutter sound, which aligns perfectly with the Nothing OS UI. The temperature is a little bit on the cooler side, but everything is super sharp. It works best in bright lighting. In low light, I found it was a little bit difficult to get the shots I wanted, but using the glyph light or the flash has been a great experience. It offers a really nice way when you're shooting subjects up close in low light to just fill out their face, make it a little bit more full. Video is amazing on here. I was honestly quite shocked at how good the stabilization was on a phone at this price point. To get this kind of portable on the go system, right out of the box. It, it was unexpected and, and I really appreciated that. So overall, I'm a fan of the cameras. This is not a low quality camera whatsoever. I'm not also going to say it's the best camera in the industry, for sure. Honestly, a better bang for your buck than I would expect for 450 bucks, and I really enjoy using it. Quickly to cover SIM and eSIM, it has dual SIM support in the tray at the bottom and no eSIM support. But I really like that it has dual SIM because that means you can use both US mobile SIM cards at the same time and get the best of both networks simultaneously. Switching over to battery, the 4500 milliamp battery had no problem getting me through my day. It charges fast, it charges slow, it even charges other devices. Altogether, it's really up to how you use the phone. So to sum everything up, there are a few questions to ask. Is the phone enjoyable to use? Absolutely. The phone doesn't have the 5G bands to work in the US, but if you want to do it for the style and you want to take the risk and bring it in, I've got it to work on US mobile, so try it at your own risk. The next question is, does this capture those early OnePlus days? Is this departure from OnePlus to start a new company working for Carl Pei? Is, is this the vision that he wanted to create? For the most part, yes. I just find that the hype is different this time around. We've already seen flagship killers. This is going for the more accessible, stealthy, and hip approach in its marketing and design rather than the tech bro flagship destroyer. Is it worth the price? Absolutely yes. For what you get, it's a great deal. And would I recommend it? If you're in the market for a new phone and you're not married to iOS, then yes. 
If you've been thinking about switching over with the whole chatter about RCS maybe coming to iOS, or if you're really just ready to jump out of the ecosystem and try something new, it was easy for me to do, and I found myself picking up the Nothing phone more often than my iPhone when I was at home for entertainment purposes. As far as iMessage goes, I mean, you know, you can't do anything about that. But the gorgeous display, the decent cameras, and the over-the-top design make it a really great competitor if you're rocking an older iPhone and looking to upgrade to something without a crazy price point. It's fast, it's beautiful, and it doesn't break the bank. Will you be trying to get a nothing phone? Or have you used it already and maybe have different thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Anthony, this is a nothing phone. Peace.